Now there's only one more thing to do here, which is uh, to cover the stuff that where Knight talks about sinusoidal waves. So it, waves that repeat have a few properties. First of all, we call the distance between crests, we call that lambda, the wavelength. We still call the time between crests, we reuse that from the last chapter, we call that capital T, the period. Uh, another thing that we reuse from the last chapter is we call F equal to one over T, the frequency. So if this is a wave train, this and uh, this entire wave train is moving to the right, lambda is the distance between wave crests, or be distance between wave troughs, it doesn't matter, or even the distance between zeros. Any of those is lambda. And t is the dis time between crests, or the time between troughs, or the time between those two zeros, or the time between those two zeros. Those are all the period t. So you have the wavelength lambda and the period t. Now, interestingly, there's a relationship between those two things and the speed of the wave, v. If this crest takes a time t to get here, then we have know how fast it's moving. v, the speed of the wave, is how far it got over how long it took to get there. So there's a relationship, v, lambda, and t. And since uh, F is 1 over T, you have another relationship. V is equal to lambda F. So there's a nice relationship, boom, for waves. The speed of the wave is the, fr is the frequency of the wave times the wavelength of the wave. Okay, that's kind of a nice little result. And then uh, this sinusoidal business. Here's how you write that. You've already learned that um, if I write uh, things as a function of x minus vt, I have a wave traveling to the right. But this doesn't work. You have to kind of fix this, okay? So you actually have x minus vt, and then you have um, a 2 pi in the numerator, and then a lambda in the denominator. Now, why does that work? Well, because if x goes to x plus lambda, then what I have here in the argument, sine of 2 pi x minus vt over lambda, that goes to 2 pi times, and now everywhere I see x, I put x plus lambda minus vt over lambda. Now, simplify that a little bit. That's equal to what I had before, which was 2 pi x minus vt. That's everything but the lambda term. So I have 2 pi x minus vt in the numerator, still have lambda in the denominator, and then I have 2 pi times lambda over lambda, so I have plus 2 pi. And so what you see here is the nice way that I've chosen this. I put a 2 pi in front of the x minus vt and then divided it by lambda. We have something going to the right with speed v. And furthermore, if you go to the right by if you go to the right by an amount lambda, you see that you get wh whatever you had before as the argument to the sine plus an additional two pi, which means you've gone exactly a full cycle to the right every time x goes to the right by lambda. So by putting this in here, I've correctly described a wave whose uh, wavelength is lambda. And now, we can, now that I've argued that, now we can rearrange this a little bit. If this wave looked like was proportional to sine of 2 pi x minus vt over lambda, the next thing I can do is I can go, oh, well, v over lambda is something I just calculated. v over lambda is f. So another way I can write this is sine of... And I 
got my 2 pi, I've got my x, I've got my over lambda, but now I have a minus 2 pi f t. Okay, now all of a sudden 2 pi f has appeared. See, v over lambda was f, but this 2 pi that's out hot front here is combined with that to make a 2 pi f. As soon as 2 pi f occurs here, all of a sudden you're going, oh my gosh, 2 pi f, we have a name for that. That's the angular velocity. And even though there's no angles in this problem, there's nothing going around in circles, it's, this is still worth calling omega t and kind of thinking of as an angular velocity. So this, is, this term here is now minus omega t, where, as usual, omega equals 2 pi f. Okay, and then we have one last thing to do. You see this combination here, 2 pi over lambda? Well, that's a bit annoying. If we've got this one all tidied up with, with omega t, and this one here is uh, kind of messy as 2 pi over lambda times x, we're going to find a new thing, which we're going to call k. And k is equal to, this has got nothing to do with Hooke's law, k is equal to 2 pi over lambda. So this is a new thing, which is 2 pi times 1 over the wavelength. And uh, in other words, if the wavelength is really short, this is a big number. And if the wavelength is really long, this is a small number, because this is proportional to 1 over lambda. And if we define this new thing, k, which is 2 pi over lambda, then we can write this as kx minus omega t. We have v equals lambda f which is v equals lambda over 2 pi times 2 pi f, which is equal to, well, the 2 pi f is our friend omega. And if you look at our definition of k, we've got lambda over 2 pi here, but k is by definition 2 pi over lambda. We've got 1 over k. So this is usually written as v is equal to omega over k. So now in terms of our new variables, we have a relationship between v, omega, and k, which is totally equivalent in our old variables to this relationship between v, lambda, and f. Well, that's a lot, as usual. Those are the main relationships, though. I've introduced uh, history diagrams, snapshots, waves traveling to the right, waves traveling to the left, and I've introduced sinusoidal waves. Could also use cosine, of course. And I've introduced all the terms that we use to describe sinusoidal waves, which are uh, omega and k. And I found the relationship of omega and k to v using the relationship between omega and f and between k and lambda. So uh, go ahead uh, with that overview and introduction and study night 16.2 and 16.3 and hopefully you'll be ready to play with waves on Monday.